Welcome to my channel where we cover the lore of Final Fantasy XIV. We cover the stories both big and small, the epic and the cute, the silly and the tragic. I hope you all enjoy the ride and welcome to the Chronicler of Lore. On the first, there are some powerful Sin Eaters called the Cardinal Virtues that walk around the land looking like the fallen warriors of light who caused the flood. At first, people had given up on hunting them down, but after the Warrior of Darkness took down the Light Warden at Holminster Switch and restored the darkness, the Virtue Hunters decided to continue their hunt. And of course, you decide to join in because taking down these Light Warden level Sin Eaters can only be good for the first. The Mikote Lurik is one of those virtue hunters, and he recently lost his partner so he's in the market for another one. Since you look like you know your way around a weapon, you'll make a perfect addition to the team, but only if you're more than just tough looking. Since he's going after one of the four virtues, he needs someone strong by his side. At least he's not dumb enough to think he can do this job alone, and even though you look tough, he decides to test your skills before he officially makes you a partner. Out in Lakeland, Lurik pays someone to bring him some bait to lure out a large monster for you to fight, which is kinda stupid because there are monsters everywhere. He didn't need to throw away money like that, but he's rich, so that's his business. You make short work of the creature that shows up, and satisfied with your performance, Reek takes you back to the Crystarium to have a feast to celebrate the birth of your new partnership. After he eats, a lot, it's time to talk some business. The virtue that he's after is Andrea, the Sin Eater version of Rinda Ray, the warrior of light who shot Alizé when they came to the source during Heaven's War. When she was alive, she was a well-known hunter of great beasts and monsters, and now she's been seen all over the realm, popping up and taking down large beasts. That wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't for the fact that the animals she kills turn into Sin Eaters, and since they were already strong beasts, they become even stronger Sin Eaters. Reek chose her because she was the greatest hunter in the world, and beating her would be a good way to get famous. And of course you'd be helping people too, which is why you agree to work with the boy, even though there's a good chance he'll get you killed. Apparently he's hired someone to track down Renda Ray, and she shows up to let you know that the virtue was recently seen in Amarang. There was some type of spider there that had been a problem for the people before, but is even worse now that she's turned it. Reek pays her for the news, pointing out how it's easier to just pay people to do the detective work than it is to do it yourself. That's true for some things, but not in situations like this. You don't get better if you pawn off responsibilities on other people. But that's not a lesson he'll learn now because you have to head to Amarang to a place called Samuel's Backbone to hunt down Render Ray's new spider sin eater. The desert is a big place, and while Reek wanted to hire some people to do the searching for him, there's no one around that he can pay, so the two of you split up to track down the creature. You find it, although it's more of a scorpion than a spider, and after you kill it, Renda Ray shows up. When you see her, the Echo shows you a vision of Renda and two other hunters as they track down an elite s rank hunt monster called Balaam Keats. There's a big bounty on it, which will have the people singing songs about whatever hunter brings it down. And of course, they'll be filthy rich too, which is always a plus. Renda and her friends attack, but Balaam drops her with a roar and kills her two friends. She survives and vows to take down the creature to avenge them. When the echo fades, Renda Ray is gone, and Reek is there, extremely confused by the way you were thrashing around. Apparently you don't just sit still when the echo takes over, which means it's a lot more inconvenient than you thought. What if you get a vision while you're standing on the edge of a cliff or something? You might end up waking up dead. When you tell him about your powers and the vision you saw, he swears that he heard that story before, but he can't remember where so he shrugs it off and y'all head back to the Crystarium where he buys another meal to celebrate your lack of really accomplishing anything. Reek just likes to spend money as much as Giot likes to drink. He decides to hire some more people to track down leads for him and while you question his rapid spending of money, he lets you know that it's not a big deal. His hired hands find information that shows that Renda Ray was seen in Kalusia where she transformed a giant bear into a sin eater. So naturally, the two of you head out to deal with it. Out in Kalusia, the two of you split up again to track down the bear, but it seems like another group of hunters actually beat you to it. The group is led by a man named Landbeard, and the reason his crew beat you there is simple. If someone will sell information to one person, they'll sell it to another. 
and Lambert paid the people more to give him the info first. He's more curious about why Reek is working with someone else to hunt Render Ray after he had left him saying how he didn't need help to hunt the Virtue. Not like he really cares since his group will get her first. He leaves, but not before warning you to leave Lurik before everything goes bad like he knows it will. Once he's gone, Reek lets you know that he and Lambert had been working together to get stronger so they could take down the Virtue, but after realizing that Lambert wasn't that good of a hunter, he decided they couldn't work together anymore. Lambert hadn't liked that so he'd found his own crew and decided to take the Virtue down before Reek just to spite him. Apparently he's good at tracking the Eaters, so to make sure he doesn't lose to his old ally, Reek decides that it'll be best if you focused on the Virtue herself and not the Sin Eaters that she turns. Which means it's time to go to the Crystarium, but first he needs to stop in Yulemore and he wants you to come with him. In the city of debauchery, you meet the source of Lurik's money, his parents. He tries to tell his father about what the two of you are working on, but as long as he doesn't ruin the family's good name, his dad doesn't care what he does. He doesn't even give his son any attention, he just tosses him some money to keep him out of his face. His dad is so disinterested that it even irritates the Warrior of Light, especially when you see that what Lurik really wants isn't money, but his dad's attention. The boy is so mad that he storms off without even taking the money. Back at the Crystarium, he lets you know that he's a free citizen of Yulemore and enjoyed a very rich, luxurious, and boring life. Which is why he left the city and became a bounty hunter. He wanted to keep his upbringing a secret, but since the two of you are working so closely together, he figured it was best that you knew, as long as you keep it to yourself. So now that you know who he is, it's time to get back to your virtue hunt. But since he refused his father's money, you'll have to do the detective work yourselves this time, exactly how you were supposed to do it in the first place. Of course he won't be able to pay you either, but that wasn't why you were there in the first place. Without his money, Lurik has no idea how to seek out leads, but the vision you had of Render Ray and her friends could lead to a clue. He had thought he'd heard the story before, and it turns out that his nurse had told it to him when he was a little kid. The story of the hunter and her friends, who went on a quest to take down a great horned beast. They fought it in the desert where it overpowered them, killed her friends and left her alive to seek vengeance. The story is exactly what you saw, meaning that the hunter who Lurik admired the most was actually Render Ray. There's more to the story, but he's having a hard time remembering it, so he figures it'll be good to ask Ovara, his former nurse, because it could have a clue that puts you on the right track. Since each of the virtues seem to be driven to do things based off of their memories from the time they were alive, he might be right. Seems like Lurik can figure things out on his own when he doesn't have money to just throw at his problems. Ovara lives in Gate Town outside of Yulemore, so that's your next stop. She had been bonded to Lurik's family and allowed to live in Yulemore, but once he reached the age where he no longer needed a nurse, she was forced to leave. At least she wasn't made to leave out of a window like some of the other people from the city. She's happy to see her little Reek, but she knows he didn't just drop by to say hi. She didn't, however, expect him to be asking about Renda Ray, but she definitely remembers the stories. She knew the Warriors of Light had been heroes despite what happened at the end of their lives, and she wanted to keep their stories alive, but since they were all disgraced, she decided to change their names, which confirms for Reek that the reason he had taken up the bow in the first place had been to follow in the footsteps of one of the Warriors of Light. He asks Ovara to tell him about Renda's hunt for the beast that killed her friends again, and she does have some details that help. Renda's hearing had always been beyond the norm, which is what made her such a good hunter. It's also why Balaam's roar had paralyzed her and forced her to watch her friends die. After that, she met Arbert and the other Warriors of Light, and they all traveled together. They became friends and got stronger. She even learned how to defend herself from sounds like the one Balaam emitted. Then one day, while they were in Raktika, she heard a rumor that Balaam had been seen in the swamps there, and she went after it alone because she didn't want to put any more of her friends in danger to fight this beast. But as the story goes, she didn't need the help anyway. She'd gotten strong enough to solo the creature, and she went back to Arbor and the others, never telling them what happened. Her vengeance complete. Thinking on where you've seen Renda up until now lets you know that she's been following the path of her hunt for Balaam, meaning her next destination is the Raktika Greatwood. And if you're lucky, the two of you can catch her there. And that's where we're going to stop for today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you'll know when new videos are posted. And if you want to buy me a coffee for my work, hit the join button and sign up to become a member of the channel. Until next time guys, later.